Hey everybody, Rich Forney here for the Peak Results Academy podcast. I'm your host, and in today's episode, I sit down with Jill McNally. Um, he's an individual real estate agent with Remax in Big Rapids, Michigan. And the reason why we're having him on this podcast is last year he did 139 individual real estate transactions. Listen, Big Rapids, maybe 10,000 people in that community. Um, he's producing at an outstanding level. You need to listen to this podcast. Feel free to reach out to him at any time, and I hope you enjoy the conversation. So stay tuned. Have you ever wondered why some people thrive in all areas of their life? Welcome to the Peak Results Academy podcast with your host, Rich Fournier. Each week, we interview industry experts who consistently dominate in the fields of health, business, and beyond. Our mission is to share their personal struggles and strategies so that you can create your own peak results. Welcome to the Academy. Hello, everybody. Rich Fournier here from the Peak Results Academy podcast. I'm your host, and I'm super excited to have an outstanding real estate agent from Big Rapids, Michigan, Joe McNally, on the podcast today. All right. It's good to be here, Rich. I'm Fantastic. Super, I'm super excited to have you. Listen, this podcast is about creating or trying to figure out what creates a peak result in someone's life, business, and health. Today, we're focusing on real estate, which is, as it turns out, primarily the focus of this podcast is, of course, I'm in real estate as well. And I'm always fascinated with the idea of production and performance in real estate. So very few real estate agents perform at a very, very high level. Um, you did 139 transactions and in, uh, individual transactions. Let's clarify that in 2019. Yeah. Um, top 15 in the state of Michigan. Um, Joe, that's phenomenal results. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of hard work. Right. Doesn't, did someone give you a book and said, here you go, here's all the magic deals? You know, when I, when I first started real estate, I actually didn't start in Michigan. I started in, in northern Maine. That's where I'm originally from. So I was, I was the youngest realtor in the state of Maine at one point in time. And at the time, I just didn't, I was kind of doing construction, some other things. I didn't have the right, the right mindset uh, to really embrace and engage in the activity it took to, to begin to build that business. But moving to Michigan, kind of languished my first year or two under in a, in a, under a brokerage, kind of a smaller, smaller brokerage that uh, handed you a phone and said, Hey, good luck. Uh, and I said, man, I got to figure something out a year in. I said, I got to quit or I got to make something happen. So it's, it, but it's been a process since that, since I changed my mind, my thinking, uh, and just kind of really got engaged on a deeper level um, with everything, whether it's reading the books or listening to the podcast or, uh, it, and, and you can really get mired down in that, right? You can have this, this uh, you can get on a roll where it's nothing but reading and, and watching and learning. You have to, at some point, be willing to put it into action every day, turn it into actionable uh, habits, be a slave to that good habit or that good model. And I tell you what, you do it consistently, a year turns into 10 and, and you come out pretty good on the end of it, so... You talk about being a slave to the habit. We are slaves yeah. to our habits anyway, right? Yeah, we are. You know, there's, yeah. a couple, there's a couple of great books on that. Some some great research on the on habits and who we are. Um, a, one of my favorite books is um, The Power of Paradigms. Uh, I think that's the title. By Joel Joel Barker. Um, yeah. We are a paradigm. We live in habit, so you might as well create a good habit because you're going to be your slave to the habit anyway. Yeah, and you know, coming into real estate. We, we've got good habits, we've got bad habits, we've got our pet habits, and they all, real estate is, is everything impacts it because it's a relational business. If you look and you want to be successful, it's got to be relational. And when it's relational, your habits are going to bleed over into everything you do, uh, into the way that you interact. You're, it's, it's every morning, it's every evening, it's the weekends, it's, it's, it's just mixed in. And so if you're going to be a slave to it, uh, the Og Mandino says, create good habits and become their slave, right? Uh, and so Og, he's, I mean, that's that's old, old news, right? But it still rings true. And uh, always fine-tuning, tweaking little tiny, tiny steps at a time, just making it a little better, a little better uh, is is real, has, has been the key for me, and, and not just for me, but for our company. Um, so I was a successful agent for, for a number of years, but then – uh, again, the environment, the culture that, uh, 
if you're constantly having your that energy or that purpose being being bled away or sucked away or stamped down, that is that's just not a fight you want to fight. And so you you create or find the right culture and environment. That is that's the most important thing you could ever find to really really generate lasting success. Because otherwise you're just going to run out of steam. It's going to be difficult to continue that uphill fight. So we, my wife and I said, let's start a company. So we did that five years ago and uh, it was one of the best decisions we ever made. So, um, so um, you are, you st- so you started your own brokerage. I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, so I'm, I am an agent. I'm an individual agent, but I'm also a broker. Got 15 agents. We're the biggest company in small town, big rapids, right? So what, very rural. Oh, what's that? 10,000 people in big rapids. Yeah, maybe 12. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's I was yeah, sorry, no. I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to put this into context. So I'm just, yeah. I'm a, you know, I'm an hour north from downtown Toronto. Um, yeah. so what, you know, in that area, we got about 7 million people. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in a small town of 10,000 people. Mm-hmm. You work in different areas in, you know, surrounding that, right. I'm assuming, right? I looked at some, I looked at your website. Yep, correct. You did 139 transactions in that small area. And, like, did you take over the entire business? <laughs> so, and, and, and believe it or not, uh, there are, I, I, while I am number one in our MLS, have been for some time, My, I have several agents that are in the top 10 here in my company, and all of them are in the top uh, 15%, 20% or so. So, uh, we do spread out. There are plenty of agents that I network all across the, the country and, and go to events all across the country. And there's agents that say, I've been working this one neighborhood my entire career. And it's like, oh my God, I can't, I just can't imagine it, right? Because the influence that we have to have is so diverse, not just in the price ranges and the in the demographics, but just just in the geographic areas are, are enormous, right? We're going, uh, I would say that myself, I'm, I definitely consolidated a little more so but consolidation I mean uh, gosh tomorrow I'm going to list three houses all of them are over half an hour away so that's that's very very typical uh, behavior for us I have agents that drive an hour and a half routinely because if someone comes to you and says hey my mom wants to sell her house in Grand Rapids then you're saying great that's only 45 minutes away let's do it right 100% yeah I, I understand very much listen Joe what enabled you to go from that first first year where you said either I got to make it happen or else I got to get out of this game. Like how did you switch that in your brain? Because people were already doing business that year. There were other people producing that year. So it wasn't because there was a lack of business. It was because something was up in your head. So how did you make that shift? Correct. So the first thing is I don't know what I don't know. So, and we all tend to want to believe that where we're sitting right at this moment we know enough to get us to the next level. We, I, I'm sitting here. I, I, it, we, we tend to feel like we know what we want to do and we know how to get there, even though I think no one's going to say I got it all. At the same time, that, that kind of, that, that if, if we live that way, especially try to get into business this way, it, it can really stagnate us. I, my, my switch went off and I said, I just have to go. I don't know what I'm doing. I just don't know. I've got to go out. I've got to learn it. There's going to be a, a process that's painful and very uncomfortable, but I'm going to have to embrace it. Me sitting here and hoping that it's going to come to me in, in my sphere or the way that I typically handle myself is not going to work. And so for me personally, that a lot of that had to do with interaction with people. The thought of, and this is typical fears, right? The thought of knocking on a, someone's door that you've never met, you don't know, and trying to sell yourself, very challenging. Because then step two is objections, right? No matter what we do in sales, overcoming objections is many times the most difficult part, the different, most difficult uh, roadblock in between us and beginning to build a relationship. And so uh, I have agents come to me all the time and, and our agents here are very well taught, very well trained, right? Uh, but it's about overcoming objections. I want to embrace it, right? What's the commission? Why should you use me? Uh, what, you know, what, what makes what I do for you different than anyone else? Why the heck am I going to, and our market's a 7% market. So why would I, why would you list my $300,000 house? And why in the world am I going to pay you almost $20,000? 
what, 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 what are you going to do for me? It's worth $20,000. Please explain it. So, and that's, that's moving up the chain, right? But I've got to find my value and I've got to figure out what people want and what, what, what really, really matters to them. And, and he, here's the thing. There's so many books you can read and so many things you can do. But at the end of the day, I, again, 139 transactions, there is no one human that was, that was the same. They're all very different. They're all very different types of personalities and they all have a very different perspective and I can't walk in with my perspective and go, that's it. So me, you know, it's, it's my perspective. This is the way I see it. This is what we're going to do. I don't operate my business that way. I am extremely fluid. I really, really cater to people on a very high level. Uh, and when I say cater, it's not just, I'm going to make sure we sell your house and put a sign up and whatever it's, it's, I want to make sure that I'm meeting all of your, all of your needs. I want to know about your life. I want to know the whys. I want to know your motives. Um, let's talk about your means. I say no to buyers and listings all the time. And what I, what I mean by that is yesterday I had a friend in, up in Reed city. I went and looked at their house and I said, please don't sell your house right now. I said, you, I, I know you guys financially, you're fine. Your house, you, you, you need to put about 10,000 into this place so I can make you about 50,000 more. It's a horrible time. What, 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 what timelines can we put together? I'll put you in touch with people uh, that'll, that'll get you in the right position. Even if it's a, a year down the road, let's, let's wait. You're losing a lot of money selling this now. So they, you know, I, I am always, I never think about it. Be, you know, I, I don't think about the check. I don't think about the end. Uh, that. I, I realized that very early on. I said, I just, I can't think about this other stuff. I got to think about, I got to dive into people's lives and show a willingness to, well, what's, what's, what's going on? What's, how can I really, really help you? And that might not be selling or buying right this minute. It might be beginning the conversation about what that would look like uh, further down the road. So there are all kinds of variables in there. People come to you. I mean, people call me, they're mature. They're on their 10th house. They're like, Joe, we want this. Okay, let's do it. Right. So, but, but really I think the reputation of Joe McNally is that Joe doesn't care about buying or selling the house. He cares about making sure that you are making a great decision. And it's one that you will not regret in a year in five years and 10 years. And that has now I'm in the place I never I never have to spend a dime in advertising. I don't. They just call call every day, all every day, and 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 I have to hire more people and more assistants and more people. Because so, it, one 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 hundred turn into one thirty nine, which will turn into one sixty, which will turn into who knows what. And it's just me consistently being that guy. So that let me guy. ask you a question: When you made the shift in your mind, did you was there a turning point? Was there one morning you woke up, you know, had a heart attack, got hit by a car? decided yeah. made a decision to to make a shift in the way you thought like what what was the catalyst there like i you know we, and then i'll just preface that you like we we bring agents into this game um you know according to nar in the us you know our our, our associations here in canada you, yeah. you know, you're looking at a 90 percent churn in the business so you had to make a decision like what was a catalyst yeah. like, like how did you so you made a decision but then yeah how and then what did you do next so the catalyst was I had worked nine months, nine months in real estate. I closed my first deal. Right. It was a $5,400, $5,400 cabin on two and a half acres. Okay. It was, I'm not, I'm, I'm not joking. And uh, I closed that deal. I think I made 70 bucks or something. And uh, I came home and I looked at my wife and I said, babe, I said, I, I can't do this. Something has to change. I cannot do this. I have just slaved away for nine months. I have, um, I've shown so many houses. I've done so many things. I've, I've sat at that desk and dedicated all this time to doing, doing activity that I thought would, would lead to success. I, and I said, we, I, I've got to make a decision. So we sat there and we, we prayed. We're praying people and we, we prayed about it. And I said, you know, I, I feel like I've just got to reach outside the lines that have been drawn around me. And I, I went the next day and I picked up the phone and I got on Google and I started Googling real estate ventures. And again, this is a guy that I just didn't, I hadn't been conditioned to, to seek out information, hadn't been conditioned to even know where to look, right? So 
I, I started searching online. This is uh, roughly 10 years ago, nine years ago. And I found this little company, just an example. I found this company, little company called Zillow, right? And, uh, and Zillow was out of Seattle and they had a little, little shop of guys and they had this estimate that everyone hated with a passion. And, and I said, you know, these guys seem like they're, uh, they're breaking some new ground, r causing some ruckus. I'm going to, I'm just going to call Zillow. So I call on this, this guy, never forget Jason picks up and Jason goes, uh, Hey, it's Jason at Zillow. You know, I'm like Jason, Hey, I'm, I'm Joe. And I just to talk to me. You guys are, are causing a ruckus out there in real estate. What, what's what's going on? What do, what do you see coming down the road? We sat there and talked for two hours. And uh, five years later, Jason was the VP for Zillow of this, that, and the other thing. And now he's like traveling the world with his wife on a on a vacation on, on like a eight month vacation or something. But anyway, back then it was fifteen guys, right? And uh, they had a vision for real estate. And he just I sat there and talked to him for two hours. That was literally a couple days after that little tiny deal I closed and I said man I'm missing out on a lot of things I'm missing out on a lot of information rural big rapids needs this right here uh, and um, it it kind of spurred me in that direction and there there was a lot of uncomfortable things I had to get through and again you tend to look at real estate agents as all oh, their big personalities and they talk to anybody about anything and they'll sit at the bar and shove a beer at you and, and you know what? I, I'm not that guy. I do enjoy, I love talking to people, but I do not like presenting myself, right? Especially when I feel like I'm being disingenuous by trying to present something that is not real as yet. Do I believe it could be? Absolutely, right? But it's not real yet, right? So early on, it was very, it was challenging. But, uh, you know, I, at the end of the day, it was me saying, listen, I am going to outwork. I'm going to out-research. Here is, here is my game plan for you. And listen, I, in something to this day, I tell everyone, all my clients, every contract I ever signed, buyer's agency I ever signed, listing contract, if I do not do everything I said, I am writing at the bottom of this document, you call me, you're disappointed, we will shred this thing right now. I do not hold anyone to anything. I want people to be blown away uh, all the time, every day. Um, and I've, I've, felt that since since that time right there I said I just I just want to find a way for people to feel so safe and so secure and know that no matter what cost it is to me I'm gonna make the decision that benefits them uh, and everything all the success I do I have CRMs and systems and blah I mean believe me I do I have very efficient well-oiled machine but at the end of the day the reputation is what's driving my business and that reputation is based on that got it Got it. And so Zillow was a portal for you to be yeah. able to generate, to leverage yourself to get, to get more leads. It you was. Phone numbers and people that were thinking of making a move into the area. And that was. And, yeah. yeah it, it, and Zillow was, and really at first it was just the conversation, right? It was like, here's these stats and here's how consumers are so dissatisfied with realtors and, and this is why they're angry. And so I was like, wow. That's really enlightening. Okay. Like I was always on the other side of the fence, like Zillow's stupid, but Zillow's like, uh, no, you guys aren't very transparent, right? I mean, you, you, you guys kind of do whatever you want and the, the consumers are subject to your industry because there's a lot of hidden information and, and you guys control it and you guys aren't very honest with it sometimes. And Zillow wants to come in and break through that and get the information to consumers. And so it kind of turned me around and said, you're, you're dang right. That's what this industry needs. This industry needs transparency and honesty. Yeah, I agree with and, you. And, and, yeah, I do. And we see it up here now. I mean, you guys have been, you're very open with your information. We just opened our information up, I think a year ago and that's still happening. And there's Ooh. websites now that are, you know, really, yeah. really open it up for everyone. Now, but here's the interesting thing. So online lead gen, all that stuff, landing pages, CRM systems, et cetera. And as a high producing agent, you said, yeah, that's important. And it's about my reputation, my work ethic, that is the magical, that's the magic glue inside there. Having faith that the activity that I'm going to do is going to create a result. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, and here you, know, you can get, give someone, you know, 3,000 leads from whatever portal you want. And the ratio of closings are going to be so different based on each individual that's working them. No question. No, oh, my. Yeah. If someone was going to start today, what do they need to do in any, in any area of the country? It doesn't really matter. So here's the great thing about today is there 
everyone's got a system, everyone's got training, and everyone's got technology. And so are there some better than others? Oh, sure, I could go beat a drum all day about this system or the other. But the truth is, it's like a car, right? I mean, I could go buy a Corvette or a Mustang or whatever. They're all going to go fast. They're all going to get me down the road. They're all going to look good. So it's, it's far more important. The driver is the most important thing. It's the driver, right? We got the cars. We got the tech. Who's driving that thing? So if I was to give advice to, to a newer agent or someone wanting to make a transition, I'd say, hey, you got to go find someone and whether, and I'm a Remax guy, right? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it is. Find someone that's driving that car in the direction it's got to go, that's maintaining it right, that's, that's fueling it when they need to, that, that has that thing moving in the right direction. That You, you want to align yourself with that. And if it's an agent, look for that broker or look for that team or look for that opportunity. That is, it's the right car. It's, it, excuse me, it's the right driver. The right driver driving that, that business down the road. And I, I try to be that every day for my agents. But... Uh, that, that there's so many things, but that's got to be step one. You got to have direction. Okay. Yeah. You got to really make a, a choice that this is what I'm. So it's even like direction, but making a decision that you are going to be in the game. Oh yeah. See yeah. Like this year. So I can get pulled in many directions because I have, yeah. you know, Oh, look at that shiny ball. Look at that shiny ball. Right. Yeah. And that's just how I'm, I'm wired. I mean, I love the shiny ball. Like yeah. I can see opportunity in everything. Yeah. So the yeah. hard thing for um, people, I think, like us, being able to just to do this. It, it is really difficult, and, and it's, it is a habit, too, because what happens is there, there is always this word disruptor, right? This word disruptor has been really big in the real estate industry sphere, right? Yeah. And everyone's trying to be – technology is the new disruptive technology. And so the, the danger of buying too much into it, I am all about engaging, embracing new technology if it benefits me and my clients, Right. But the thing is that especially with social media, so much is driven by social media, that it's so easy to portray some new flash and banging thing on social media, some new technology, some new tactic. Yep. And at the end of the day, I, I tell my agents, that they, they'll come to me and say, hey, I'm so down. Look at this agent. Look at what they're doing. Do I got to do that? I say, no, 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 no. You, you got to be you. And you, if this is not you, you got to find something and master it. And you can't master anything if you're always hopping here, there, and everywhere. Mastery is the key, and people look to you for, for your advice and expertise if they know you've mastered whether it's this method of procuration of leads or if it's this uh, geographical area that you have mastery over and your knowledge and your ability to market that area. There's so many directions an agent can take, right? But at the end of the day, we have, we have the time. We all have got the time. We just got to believe that it doesn't all happen right this second. And social media and, um, and a lot of the marketing we have, it makes it feel like it's got to happen today. Every agent's like, I got, I got to make a big change today, a huge transformation change. It's like, no, you have, you have bad habits. You got up at, at 9.30 this morning, right? Change that. Get up at 6.30. Now you, you know, and, and I love Ryan Serhant out of New York, right? So Ryan Serhant, one of the top agents in the, in the, in the world right now. But Ryan says, you know, I walked into New York City. And I'm like, how the heck am I going to beat these guys? He goes, and then I started calling him, and no one would pick up the phone before 8.30. He goes, I got it. I just got to get up at 5.30, and I've already beat him, right? I've, I've already gained three hours every single day if I'm answering the phone at 5.30. I've already gained, and he has all the math, right? I've gained this many months or weeks in the year. So th there's always a great angle for new agents. It's just not – the shiny technology people tend to gravitate towards social media, especially or the buzz. And it's not, it's really most, mostly basic. Spend your time wisely. Uh, get up early, do, do the right, create some really great habits. I have a perfect calendar I live by. Um, and my calendar is never perfect, but every minute from Monday morning at five o'clock through 10 PM, six days a week, is filled out with 15 minute increments of exactly what I want to be accomplishing. Everything that a good, that, that what I have found to be a good agent and a good broker every week is all in that calendar. I have never done a perfect week. I have never followed it perfectly, but it is there every 15 minutes is the reminder, right? And, and uh, it could drive some people crazy for me. It's just knowing that that's there. I have a game plan and I tweak it and adjust it 
But every week I get up Monday morning and I know exactly what I need, what I need to do this week. And that keeps me from being distracted, from being pulled off course by what's going on here, what's going on there. It keeps me very consistent. Um, and I, I, I live by that. And, and the, what, what I accomplish is, is incredible. Yeah, it is actually. I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, when it's that regimented out, mm-hmm. um, it's hard to do in real estate. You're pulled in it's, distance, right? And, and, and that's why I say I've never done a perfect week and I don't intend to because there's always immediate needs. If someone says, Joe, I got a house, I got to list it later this week. What you got? So, but, but what I do is, for example, uh, if I pull my calendar up, so here, I've got uh, tomorrow afternoon from 2 to 4.30, I have set aside for listings. So what did I do? Early this week, a couple people called me. I said, how about Friday at 2? How about Friday at 3? How about Friday at 4? Right, so I I know the activities I need to do, but then I've got at 12 noon tomorrow, I've got uh, meet someone new, take someone out to lunch, uh, take one of your, you know, I, I have these type of activities that are going to, there's all kinds of things. I have date nights with my wife in there, right? I've got uh, time with my kids in there. I've got all these things. And those are, those are the things that I need to be healthy as a human being. Got it. Advice, right? I do. I get it because you can, you know, this thing right here, um, social media yeah. is like just, it's my, it's yeah. my pain. Like that's my, I don't even watch TV hardly anymore. It's like, what's going on in the world? I, yeah, absolutely. Um, should, uh, you know, I know we're tight for time and I, and I, um, it's good. It's I, good. I, I want to make sure we're okay for time for you, but also I want to, I want to dig a little bit deeper granularly with you. Mindset is everything. But that is the magic Holy grail, by the way, that is everything. Yeah. How I think yeah. and how I act are integrally, tr- you know, they're, they're ingrained and they're congruent. If they're not congruent, then nothing is going to happen. So if we get into the typical day to day for an agent, or should they be, participating in lead gen online today in today's market or should they go farm an area today what should they start with so here is my personal model this is what i believe please is that if i am paying for more so i i will call a paid referral whether that is um, I'm getting it through realtor.com or Zillow or real or referral exchange, any of the host of sites out there. If it's more than 25% of my business model, okay, then that's not healthy. Now I understand a new, a new agent might have no other option or might feel they have no other option. But at the same time, if I'm not l- looking long term, if more than 25% of my business is coming from something I paid for, that's not a healthy, that's not a sustainable model. You'll never be able to close the circle, right? So the circle to me, every agent should be considering it every minute of the, not every minute, but every day. You got to have a plan for taking care of past clients, current clients, and finding future clients. So the business plan for an agent looks like this. You want to turn your past clients into future clients and then get enough of them going to where you just complete a circle. You never have to go outside the circle. Your past clients are turning into future clients or referring you future clients, right? And then you're taking care of them and they're continuing to create the circle. So the activities, as long as that agent has that in mind and goes, I'm going to, I'm going to complete the circle. I'm going to make sure I never lose a a client. I sold something for, I'm going to be there. They're going to be my biggest fan. They're going to rave about me. Any way that you add to this circle is okay with me. And there's so many ways to add to it, right? It's just, but you got to create that circle. You got to make sure that you're not going out the back end. The problem is, that Zillow has exposed the industry because what's happening is someone is going on Zillow and they're clicking a face, a name they've never met, never spoken to. And what does data show in the U S every person knows five agents personally. All right. Personally, that means they have a personal connection to five realtors. So these people are going that have bought and sold probably with other agents before they already know five and they're clicking a name and a face they've never met. What does that say about us as an industry? We've been taking them in and kicking them out. Uh, U.S. also, 70% of buyers forget their agent's name within the first 12 months. They cannot remember who sold them the house. So we've got to beat that somehow, right? And again, new agents come in and they're worried about how do I build my business? And I say, hey, you know what? 
if, if you got to buy everything to start, there's a lot of leads out there you can buy. But what happens in that concept is you begin to think it's like the trash can on the computer, right? So to, I, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. And so with that mindset, the, the, the agents always know they can buy more. It, it really takes away from their focus on the ones they have and the understanding. It's frustrating to build a relationship. People don't pick up and they don't text back. And they, and they were pre-approved, now they're not. And they did want to buy, now they don't. And so that's, that is just, it, that's how, that, 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 that's the business, right? Thank and you. so you just nailed it for sure. Yeah. That's exactly how you feel every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it is, it's every day you wake up and you go, this is what's going to happen. And so the danger of buying the leads is that the agents tend to go, forget this. I'm going to go buy some more. Right. So it's always chasing. It's just always chasing. And so I say, if, if you are, if you're buying leads, you better be building great habits and putting everyone in that CRM. Everyone's being followed up with. You're building relationships long term. Um, I, I, I pit, tell my agents to picture, you know, those big, uh, what are those things that used to have in the mall? You put, a, you put a dime in the top and it spins around, right? Eventually gets down. So we, we all, when that, that dime is going to drop in at some point, right? It's going to drop into our, into our piggy bank. But before it does, most of them have to travel a very, very long, slow route all the way down to this, and agents can't picture it. They want it right there at the bottom, just, just about to fall in their pocket. Right. And so you gotta, you got to have everything going. Uh, that, that's, that's why bu buying leads, you know what? I, agents do it. They're, they're successful at it. But in another way, it's the worst because I think it, I think it can create really bad tendencies in agents. And yeah. Eight out of 10 of them are done in eight months. They get in, they throw some money at some leads. It's a bunch of people are upset with them. Don't show up, stand them up at a showing, stand them up at a listing. And then it, it, it gets disheartening, right? Because you're buying these leads. Something should be happening. All these people are calling me. Doesn't work that way. It doesn't. Yeah, they didn't make a real decision. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think someone informing them of what is going to take right and what it really looks like uh, is so key because I think something I hear and I have inner agents in this office all the time. I'm not, not agents, but people coming in. I want to be a realtor. It's unreal all the time. And so as my time gets, well, my time has been full for a long time, but I, I like to, I like to tell them what to expect. And I've gotten very good at that over the years, but so much of what I hear is, Oh, I love HGTV and I love photography and I have, I love people and I, I just really think I love houses and I love the whole thing. It's kind of this really vague, all the things that they love. Right. And so that's going to, you know, and so I'm like, okay, so, you know, you're, you're going to set your alarm every morning for six and you're going to get up and you're going to cold call. I tell the new agents and we don't have to cold call now. Right. You know what? They should, they should learn how to cold call because cold calling really confronts some of your greatest fears as a person, as an agent, right? It, it'll, it, even if it's not as successful, maybe some other lead generation uh, sources, uh, other, other ideas, it's going to make you overcome the worst objections, the nastiest responses, the, the groggiest people. And I think it's as long as you're conditioned here to embrace that and to smile through it, um, Every rejection I've ever had, every single one, I've always called them back, called them back and said, I would love to know what I could have done better to earn your business. Every single one in my entire career, always, always. That's been from day one. And without that attitude, that, that, that's the difference, right? Ah, screw that guy. No, 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 no. No, you got to call that guy. I don't care if you like him. I don't care what happened, right? You got to call them and you got to talk to them and say, what Please give me advice. What could I do better? And you're better every single time for it. It's a painful conversation. No one wants to hear, well, you know, you did this wrong or you suck or you, I just don't like you, right? It's good. It's really good. You know what? This is great advice. I'm going to have to promote this especially because I think what the advice you're giving is you have to have a servant's heart. And this, you do. Like if you're not fully committed to being rejected a zillion times every day for a very long period of time, so you yeah. have to earn the right to have this business, and that takes a lot of time and effort. And there's all the fancy things, and they look on Google. Yes, they have yeah. to find you. That's all part of it. Yeah. 
And unless yeah. you're engaged to be rejected for a very, 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 very long time. Absolutely. Yeah. There, there's a saying, it's my favorite saying in business. Um, and it's been worn out uh, by a lot of people, but it's still so true. And it's that people will, will forget what you say and they will forget what you do. But they will never forget how you make them feel. Um, and so how you make it, and that's, that's deeper, right? So, you know, I'm not grateful for McDonald's. I'm not grateful for them, but do I go there when I'm in a pinch? Heck yeah, I do. You know, I'm not like making eye cat contact with everyone around me like, hey, I'm here, I'm here, guys. But I'm like, I'm there, right? And so I don't want people to feel that way about me. I want them to be grateful, not I closed the deal. No, it's like, no, I, I Joe did close the deal, but it was way more than that. It was way, we actually sold a year later than we were originally going to, or we sold earlier, or or, or we split the property and sold this separately, or any, any million scenarios that I'm like, I'm here to give you counsel on what I would do if I were in your shoes. Not like, what do you need? Okay, I'll do it. That, that robotic sales type, fly them in, fly them out. And so now I get to turn this over upon itself and people, people refer me. I don't, I don't have to advertise anymore because people know exactly what I am. And, and it's not like, you know, anyone, if, if, if Bob's in the room with Pete and Pete's like, yeah, I'm listening to my house and Okay, well, who are you using, Pete? Well, my guitar teacher, you know, he sells real estate. It's like, oh, no, screw that guy. You got to call Joe, man. You got to call Joe. That, that's what I want people to feel like, right? I want them to go, oh, no, no, Joe, Joe's, Joe, it's not just he's going to get your house sold. And, and anyone can sell a house. And that's the, pro, that's the problem. Put a sign in the yard, throw it on the MLS. Great, it's probably going to sell, right? Kind of hit the price right. Market's hot. I mean, really hard to miss that target. Right. It, it, it may seem that way, but it's way going beyond that, going, looking beyond that. Um, I am very blessed because I do get to run a brokerage and I get to spend a ton of time with my wife. I'm a professional musician as well. I play, I play music. I have since I was five years old. I, I travel the world, go to countries all over the world, but I still get to do all these transactions and help all these people. And it's because they're, they're coming to me. They're already believers. Right, they know exactly what they're getting. I'm going to ask you a couple, two more questions, okay? Yeah. Just I'm cognizant of our time. Yeah. If you were to give some advice, Joe, to beat you, what would what would you tell them? Because like I, the reason why I asked that question. Yeah. Say in my market today, I have two of the biggest teams in in the world here. Yeah. Small market, right? Sixty five people on one team. Mm -hmm. One team. Yeah. Um. What advice would you give someone to, to win the day? Be Joe in the market. So if, if, if I would say, I, and I tell my agents this all the time, by the way, I want all of you to beat me because ultimately I, I'd, I'd rather be a broker and rather be a, a counselor and advisor and, and teach other people to do this. And so what I tell them is, hey, you, you need to build a team, um, but you need to do it very strategically, very slowly and very carefully. And when I say slowly, I mean make the decision slowly doesn't have to happen slowly. It means make the decision very slowly and carefully. Make sure you have the right people in the right place. Because ultimately growth is about, we only have a certain amount of time in the day and we all reach a point to where efficiency has maxed out and where the time begins to dip into your productivity, dilute your brand, so on and so forth, right? Yep. Into, into the quality. And so you need to duplicate yourself. So I say a, a team is a phenomenal concept provided it's done correctly. There's a lot of agents that are selling 15 houses and they're like, oh my God, I'm so busy. I'm going to start a team. And I hear all the time. And, and I'm like, come on, man. You know, first, are you using a transaction coordinator? Oh, 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 you're not? Okay. No, no, you need to use a transaction coordinator. Then hire an assistant, right? Then, then, then you're going to go from 15 and 20 to 50, right? Okay. You want to get past 50? Probably time to start a grab a buyer's agent, right? Handle some of your buyers, right? Make sure you're still providing that same high high level of service because at the end of the day, you squeeze yourself too much, service is going to go down. Yep. Your brand's going to be hurt. I and I won't do it. I will not personally do it. And so I have found a way to be efficient and close 139. Might be 150 this year, right? Just just me and my team's doing great too. But I've, I've got to lean on people that are going to represent me. And the more people that I can get under my wing 
on in my team, right? That represent me and can and can represent what I want. And, and that sometimes that I break it down to even service providers, because I mean I'm telling people this is this is the guy you want to use for plumbing. This is this is your contractor. This is your roofer. This is your landscaper. And so the real estate agent has such a unique opportunity to be the central hub and figure of a transaction of people's life that these people will develop relationships. I see it all the time. They move into town. Their first 10 relationships are a direct result of me, direct result of me because they meet this person or this contractor. And so that takes a ton of time and a ton of resources. So it's got to be done very carefully, but you want to beat me, do it bigger and better than me. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I, 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 I get bored. Maybe in 10 years, I'm just done with real estate. I don't know, but <laughs> probably not. What, um, what are your three favorite books that you would want your children to read to succeed in business? Um, if I was going to say, I'd probably say start with the greatest salesman in the world. Um, it's a, it's a tiny, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, Og's fantastic. So greatest salesman in the world is good. It's, it's great because it's short. Okay, it's it's short, it's concise, and to the point. Yep. Uh, I would say number two, Miracle Morning, without a question. Oh, I'll, I'll write down. Yep. Uh, Mi- Miracle Morning is an incredible book, and believe me, there are so many fantastic books out there. Um, I just could go on and on and on. I would say number three, uh, probably probably uh, somewhere between fanatical prospecting I like that one kind of gets mindset tuned up right um and then another one i like i like keller's uh one thing right keller's keller's, keller's written a lot of good good stuff but uh I top I, i'm going to say top two top two coming in greatest salesman and miracle morning uh because it's about mindset i am such a believer in mindset mentality the because the tools man they're everywhere the leads they're everywhere you know the it's it's, it's in our face. It's all over the place. Mindset is everything. Got to get the mindset tuned up right. I appreciate you so much, Joe. You delivered so much value today. And here's um, for our listeners today. This is a guy that did 139 individual transactions last year. He's got a family. He's got a life. And he still did 139 transactions. Absolutely. Um, so whatever you want to do, it's possible. You got to change to change your head. Thank you so much, Joe, for giving us of your time today. I really appreciate you. Um, I'd like to have you back on the show um, when you have some time towards the end of the year to see yep. how you navigated the, the rest of COVID and the insanity that's happening in November. Um, I'm really curious to see how you're going to navigate the next six months. So um, thank you so much for being you, and I wish you nothing but the best. I've enjoyed it immensely, Rich, and, and uh, my pleasure. Anytime. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you like what you've heard and you're interested in seeing if you are fit to work with Peak Results Academy, here's what I want you to do next. Head over to peakresultsacademy.com slash call. That's peakresultsacademy.com slash call and book an appointment to speak with our team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 45 minutes and get you crystal clear on three things. Number one, what do you really want out of life and your business? Number two, what is not working for you today? And number three, the exact strategy you should be using to create massive change in these areas. Remember, changing your life and creating massive results does not happen by itself. You need expert guidance to make it happen. We're helping clients all over the world create peak results in their health, in their businesses, and in their personal lives. To see if we can help you do the same, head over to peakresultsacademy.com call. We'll chat soon.